Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark of the Mad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 2000s Batman Beyond The Return of the Joker. We're with you. With you. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. I needed that today. I really did. I'm reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm giving them all a score of 1 to 10. After I watch them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1920 silent movie era, and now I am at the year 2000 with Batman Beyond The Return of the Joker. This movie has a 100% fresh rating from the critics and an 86% fresh rating from the audience. It stars Will Friedel as Terry McGinnis, Mark Hamill as the Joker, Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne, and Dean Stockwell as Tim Drake. This is the third film in the DC Animated Universe, and it continues resolving plot points of the new Batman adventures. Now, this is the first Batman animated movie that I have ever seen. Yes, I understand it is the third in the DC Animated Universe, but luckily this movie has a lot of flashbacks. It does a really great job of explaining everything to you, helping you understand everything, so you don't necessarily have to go back and watch the other two. I think someday I will go back and watch them just because I enjoyed this movie, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. I will say that I was extremely excited and eager to watch this movie because I am a huge Mark Hamill fan. Now, I knew he was the voice of the Joker for a very, very long time. Um, he's legendary. He's the legendary voice of the Joker. I just never heard him do it on screen before. And I thought he did a fantastic job. Um, he Now he will probably always be the Joker to me. Uh, Kevin Conroy is also legendary for his portrayal of Bruce Wayne, so it was nice being able to hear him do the voice as well and to really hear what Bruce Wayne is supposed to sound like. Um, now, there's going to be spoilers in this review, just to let you know. So this movie is about Terry McGinnis, who is the protege, the new Batman. He is under Bruce Wayne's uh, wing, apparently. Um, Bruce Wayne is elderly. He's too old to continue on as Bruce Wayne, so he is retired. Terry McGinnis is young. I, I think he's supposed to be like 18 or 19, but his voice is sounds much younger. He doesn't sound like he doesn't have a deep voice. He has like a child-like voice, so I'm not really sure how old he's supposed to be, but I think it's like supposed to be somewhere around 18 or 19 if I had to take a guess. Um, so while Terry McGinnis is crime stomping, he runs into the Joker gang, and he ends up 14 a plan, a diabolical plan. They have to steal some um, communications equipment, some electronic equipment. He goes back and he tells Bruce Wayne about his uh, deeds and about how he stopped the Joker gang. Uh, and then eventually the Joker will also present himself to Bruce Wayne. Now Bruce Wayne is perplexed by this because the Joker was supposed to have been dead for many, many years and Bruce Wayne was there present when the Joker was killed. He was a psychopath, a monster. So how is it possible he could still be around after all this time? It's not possible. He died years ago. You're sure? I was there. So Bruce Wayne knows that this isn't the real Joker. Also, Bruce Wayne is like a man in his 60s or 70s at this point, and the Joker who has returned is like a man of 30 or 40. So he's very young, and he's very vibrant, and he's energetic, and there's absolutely no way if the Joker lived, which he didn't, there'd be no way that he could be this young, ever. Um, so Bruce Wayne... Knowing something is up here, he tells Terry McGinnis, you know, you should probably hang up your bat suit, uh, call it a career. The Joker is very advanced. He is a very hard criminal. I think he's going to be too much for you. There's no use in risking your life to take on this old crazy guy that you don't know about. I will take him on. I will figure out who he is, and I will once again end the Joker's life. Terry McGinnis, of course, does not like this plan. Um, he believes he is in this for the right reasons. He believes that he really wants to help people and that he should continue on as Batman. And with that, he has to fight all of Batman's old foes if they show up again. So um, eventually the Joker is able to get into the Bat Lair and he poisons um, Bruce Wayne, and he, poisoned Bruce, he poisons Bruce Wayne's dog, Ace. Now, this, of course, is very alarming, because how does the Joker know who Bruce Wayne is? How does he know that Bruce Wayne is Batman? Now, Terry McGinnis ends up finding Bruce Wayne. He gives him some sort of, like, uh, 
potion to help him recover. And then he goes to Barbara Gordon, who is the new commissioner, who was the former Batgirl. And he says, hey, look, like, can you tell me what's going on? Because Batman Bruce Wayne won't tell me uh, anything about the Joker's past, how the Joker died. Like, I need this information if I'm going to take on the Joker. So Barbara tells um, Terry McGinnis the story. There was a gentleman named Nightwing, who I believe was supposed to be a version of Robin, um, who ended up going missing. And then the Joker captured his successor, who was Tim Drake, <coughs> who was Robin. And there was this manhunt for Robin where everyone was looking for him for months. And then Batman and Batgirl finally find Robin in Joker's lair, where Joker has been just working over Robin's mind for months and has dri driven him crazy. Say hello, JJ. <laughs> to the point to where uh, all he does is kind of like laugh and kind of snivel a little bit. There's no dialogue coming from Robin. He's just like a crazy uh, version, like smaller version of the Joker, essentially. Now, the Joker's plan is to have Robin murder Batman, and then he can kind of get like the last laugh, and he can kind of, your your sidekick killed you, and it's all because of me. Um, this goes awry, though, when Robin kills the Joker instead. <laughs> Um, Batman then takes Robin back home. He, like, gives him some sort of antidote to whatever was going on with him. Uh, he works with him for a few months, and then he forces Tim Drake to retire from being Robin. Tim Drake then goes on to have a family, and he becomes, like, a expert in, uh, technology and technology equipment. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> in the beginning, the Joker's team was stealing electronic equipment. So, um, eventually, Nightwing, or sorry, Terry McGinnis thinks that Robin might, he, he, either he's somehow involved or he knows something about what's going on. So he once again goes to question um, um, Robin, Tim Drake. Um, he, he's at like a warehouse and as he's questioning him, uh, first of all, before I go through that, I want to say that there's this guy named Jordan Price in this movie who was a Wayne Enterprise executive who looks a lot like the Joker. <laughs> like his body type, his build, everything about him looks like the Joker. I think that they're trying to get you to believe that this guy is the Joker and then kind of give you like this weird um, shock at the end of the movie. But it's so much, he's so much like Joker, you have to think that this isn't actually the guy who's Joker because it would just be too easy at that point. <laughs> there has to be something else going on and if you thought that, you would be right. So he, um, when he meets... Robin at this warehouse, he realizes that the Joker implanted Robin with some sort of microchip in his spine, and this microchip somehow um, captures the consciousness of the Joker, and Robin is able to turn into the Joker. Um, I will say technology, uh, this type of technology confuses the heck out of me. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly how a microchip can make someone look like someone different. Like, it's not just Robin turns, like, starts laughing and has makeup and still looks like Robin. Like, he actually turns into the physical embodiment of the Joker. And I don't know how this happens. Like, I, I was incredibly confused by this. But anyway, um, Terry McGinnis ends up defeating Robin slash Joker, and everything ends up hunky dory, peachy keen, uh, happy ending, right? So, I thought this movie was a pretty decent animated film. Like I said, I really love the voice acting in this movie. And I really love the fact that I get to see Robin in another Batman movie that's not Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> now, I've seen all the live-action Batman movies that aren't tied to Justice League and are not tied to Suicide Squad. So, as far as Batman goes, I've seen Christian Bale, Robert Pattinson, George Clooney, uh, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer. I think that's it. 
And then Chris O'Donnell was Robin in one of these live action movies and people hated it so much and he just did such a bad job. The movie was terrible and he did such a bad job as Robin that I think that that was one of the reasons why Robin has never been in a live action <laughs> Batman movie ever again. Um, so it was nice seeing this iteration of Robin in this movie and I really love the way they did this because he's like crazy, he's out of his mind, but then when he's uh, older, he's, um, you know, more subdued, he's the family man. It's not that stupid camp type of Batman that you had when Chris O'Donnell was Robin. I think if they want to create a Batman Beyond movie that is like this movie, they could put a Robin in that movie and they could make him just like this uh, and it could succeed and it could be, it could be fine. Now, I know a lot of like, people are going to hate me for saying that because a lot of people hate live-action Robin. Um, but that's just my opinion. Chris O'Donnell now does in NC, uh, NCIS Los Angeles, so it's not like he's like doing more movies or anything. Um, but I think that they could do a pretty good Robin if they tried to bring him back. It's been a long time. Enough years have passed. I think it's okay to bring him back into the fray. Um, but I really love Robin's character in this movie. The the part where he goes crazy and he's trying to deal with his cra the craziness of his past and who he is now. I really love that dynamic of the movie. I, he was probably my favorite character in the in the entire movie. Terry McGinnis was a little annoying to me, <laughs> just because his his voice was so young. And I think that his character is supposed to be, like I said, older than what his voice is reflecting. And it just didn't work for me at all. But the other voice acting was, was, was quite good. I was confused at the end, like I said, about the microchip thing or whatever is in the back of his neck um, that's making him turn into the Joker. Like how that actually happens. Like the science behind that. I don't understand it. Maybe I missed something in the movie, which is which is 100% possible. Could have missed something. Uh, but I don't know. I didn't understand it. I did like seeing like Batgirl in this movie, Nightwing in this movie, um, an older version of um, Batgirl as Barbara Gordon. They even had an older version of the girl who's the Joker's girlfriend. I don't remember her name at the moment. I'm probably going to get like lit up for that. But she, there was an older version of her in the movie too. Just to see these characters grow up and to become older and to see like the protégés that come after them. I really love that dynamic. I've never seen that in a Batman movie before uh, just because I've only seen the live action movies. And it's always just Batman is the main character. He's the main superhero. Um, but I, th I thought this movie... Um, it was it was a fair it was a fair animated movie. I don't think it really does like anything new as far as animated movies go. It didn't like reinvent the wheel or anything. I'm gonna review a movie tomorrow called Mind Game that is just so crazy amazing that when I look back on this movie, I say this movie was okay. <laughs> this movie was fair. Um, I really enjoyed watching a animated version of Batman. Loved watching, listening to the legendary voices of the animated uh, version of Batman. Um, I give it an 8 out of 10. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.